Each week, American History TV's American Artifacts visits museums, archives, and historic places. Next, we visit the National Archives in College Park, Maryland, to learn about the Kennedy Assassination Records Collection. The Warren Report was released to the public 50 years ago on September 27, 1964, and we'll see video recorded by the National Archives of many of the well-known artifacts from the investigation, including Lee Harvey Oswald's rifle, the so-called magic bullet, and the camera original Zapruder film. The President John F. Kennedy Assassination Records Collection was created because of the President John F. Kennedy Assassination Records Collection Act of 1992. Since the time of the assassination, there's been numerous official investigations, starting with the Warren Commission and then some congressional investigations. Church Committee looked into it, Pike Committee, and then of course House Select Committee on Assassinations. And then in the early 90s, there was a movie that came out by Oliver Stone. And at the end of that movie, he made a point of saying that all of the records had not been open and available. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the uh, subcommittee, my name is Oliver Stone. And I assure you it is with pleasure and some pride that I appear before this subcommittee today to urge the passage of House Joint Resolution 454, quote, to provide for the expeditious disclosure of records relevant to the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. And so the purpose of the act was to make sure that all of the records that were considered assassination related were collected, sent to the National Archives, and open to the greatest extent possible. You can search on an item level the records that are in the collection. And if you see something that you'd like to see, you can come here, ask to see it on our business hours when we're available. Um, the box will be pulled from our hold area and made available in our research room here at the National Archives in College Park. Here we have three items which you requested. Um, unlike the physical artifacts, we were able to accommodate you and make these available to you because these are basically textual documents. They're not uh, physical artifacts of the collection. So this is a custom-made container. It's made by our conservation staff. Um, and again, this is acid-free. Um, this is uh, mylar. And they've got this handy little lift so that you can get it out of its well without having to pull on it. Lee Harvey Oswald's address book. You can see there's a commission exhibit number on there, commission exhibit 18. And um, it has all of his handwritten items, including a map, addresses, and telephone numbers, as you would expect. Because of the huge interest in this, we have numerous people who want to have access to these materials. And so there's always a tension between conservation and access. And so um, that's probably been our biggest challenge. And the way we have addressed that is, is by trying to provide as much access as we can through still pictures and film of the most um, popular artifacts that are in the collection so that people can see them and have their research questions answered without actually looking at the actual physical artifact. Because every time we have to make an actual item available, we are risking a bit of the conservation of the item. And so um, that's why for the press we have provided B-roll uh, video of the artifacts themselves, um, which we did uh, prior to the 50th anniversary. This is the famous um, rifle which um, Oswald used to assassinate the president. Again, you can see the custom box that was created by the National Archives Conservation Staff. Again, it has its own commission exhibit number, which is commission exhibit 139. And we consider it part of the records of the Warren Commission, because they were the organization who had custody last prior to transfer. From your perspective, uh, all this effort put into preserving things. Why is that important? Well, that's our mission here at the National Archives. Um, our job is to make sure that the history of the, of the U.S. government is preserved for all time. And, you know, there's only a very small percentage of records, two to three percent, that are considered important enough to come here to the National Archives. If it's important enough to come here, we need to preserve it for all time. So we work with our conservators. We have access policies to work with our researchers. And increasingly, we're trying to digitize our records and make them available on the web so that anyone anywhere 
can have access to the records of the National Archives.